painter, a lot of my paintings are about process and just the process of creating etchings really, really draws me to it because there's so much you can do to an etching in the process that really comes out in the final piece. I love that printmaking, you can make many of it. It's not like, I don't think that people should use it as an assembly line process, but to be able to have multiples of something, I think is really nice because you can give it out or sell it and it just becomes so widespread so easily, kind of like how things are on the internet. about the Gibbs collection is that it is so rich with printmakers. And most of that, the printmaking activity uh, in Charleston was really thriving in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, uh, and of course continues today. This is an etching by Alfred Huddy. Uh, it's called Monday Morning in Charleston. Alfred Huddy was really a member of the artist colony up in Woodstock, New York, but he started spending his winters here in Charleston in 1920 uh, and really came back for the next 30 years and is one of the most prolific interpreters of this particular area um, during that time period and produced somewhere around uh, t over 200 um, etchings and dry points over his career. Uh, this one in particular is nice because we have the original plate from which she was working and you see it here and you see these rib marks. Um, essentially, when the artist was done making the prints, he would strike it out so that additional prints couldn't be made from the plate. A significant portion of our collection is comprised of works of art by regional artists that focused on Charleston but chose to work in the print medium. When the Gibbs was built in 1905 and became sort of the focal point of artistic activity in Charleston, this was at the same time the period where printmaking became extremely popular in this country. And therefore, artists like Alice Ravenel, U.G. Smith, Elizabeth O'Neill Verner, Alfred Huddy, uh, Anna Hayward Taylor, who are considered the pinnacles of the Charleston Renaissance period from 1915 until the early 1940s really focused on this institution and on their printmaking and establishing the collections here. All four of those artists in some way or another left their legacy to this institution and were in some way related to the institution either as board members or as teachers or as students here. It's, it's really quite fascinating. Printmaking is important, I think, because it allows a lot of artistic creativity, um, a lot of flexibility for artists to sort of explore what's most important to them. Um, it offers lots of opportunities to work with mixed media, to combine photography and printmaking. So I think it is very important, and you can achieve things that you can't simply by working on a computer or working in Photoshop. The Gibbs Archives includes a lot of the materials that were used to create various works of art in our collection. And here you can see some of the tools used for Japanese woodblock printing. Printing with the Japanese method was, was very difficult to make sure that the image registered properly. So each pull of the print with the key block and with each color had to be lined up precisely for the, in order for the image to register properly. It's so nice working with the wood grain and each piece of wood is going to be something different. So you get different flow with each cut, but it's all in the mark making. And when you're working on a block, it's very, very sensuous. And it's just really nice to, to carve it, honestly. The, the printing's fun too, but it's really, with wood specifically, it's about the carving. If it weren't for the traditional mediums of printmaking, we wouldn't have the digital tools that we have today. I mean, half of what you do in Photoshop, you can do with a screen print, or you can do with various layers of colors in printmaking. 
Um, and I don't think it's necessarily traditional versus digital. I think that as art progresses, as artists make more art, you're going to find that digital and traditional find this plane where they work together. You're going to find where digital complements to traditional and vice versa. So I think it's important for both mediums to stay alive and for artists to just continue experimenting because in the end that's what it's all about.